Hello YouTube, welcome back. Uh, my name once again is Nate Dobis and today we're going to be talking about the different ways to accent double strokes. In some of my previous videos we talked about the grip and how to hold a, the stick in a loose fashion but still get a real powerful sound. We talked about different stroke types, the full stroke, the down stroke, the tap, the up stroke. Now, instead of accenting with single strokes, we're going to accent with double strokes. Before we go into that, let's talk quickly about the double stroke. What I like to do with my double stroke roll is I actually like to pinch with my middle finger and the fulcrum point of the thumb and the index finger. So that gives me a little extra leverage when I'm playing the double strokes. And once we get a little faster, we're going to pump the arms a little bit. But for this medium tempo roll, even some of the slower tempos, I'm going to squeeze again with a slight pressure with the middle finger and a little pressure in the front. So that may sound like a contradiction from previous videos, but the fulcrum is going to shift. It doesn't change, but there's a slight shift from the back to the front, okay? So now that we've talked about our double strokes, we're going to talk about how to accent our double strokes. When I think about accented double strokes, I'm quickly reminded of the music of Tower of Power and the amazing drumming of Dave Garibaldi um, and his, his linear drumming. If you've ever listened to uh, squib cakes or the grooves for soul vaccination you might hear this macro groove but if you look at these grooves on paper and notice the micro there's tons of accented and unaccented notes happening all at once and he's a real master of the pull out and control strokes um, in the left and the right hand especially so if you get a chance check out uh, Tower Power's East Bay Grease which is an amazing fusion album. Um, the, another Tower Power album that comes to mind is uh, Back to Oakland. Unbelievable uh, fusion playing, and it's a really great way to see how the concepts of the, of the practice, pad, practice pad or snare drum can really be applied um, in a musical situation to the, to the drum set. Okay? So what we're going to do now first is talk about accenting the first part of the double, or what I like to call a control stroke, because you're controlling the double. And in theory, the, the first note is strong, followed by a tap for the second note. Okay, so again, we accent the first note of the double, the second one, the second partial is soft. Okay, so you might be saying, well, you're actually only playing two quarter notes. Yes, I am playing two quarter notes, but I want to play this slow, so you can see how each stroke is made up of because when we play a control stroke it's actually one motion but two notes are coming out at the same time so what I'm doing here is I want to initiate the stroke from the forearm send that energy down through the wrist into the hand okay again the first note strong second note low and soft or controlled hence the control stroke same thing with the left okay and a really neat exercise to practice this is why don't you play a series of do of unaccented double strokes say for four counts and then accent the downbeat soft for four counts then we're going to Soft, two, three, accent her four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and that's the control stroke. You can do the same thing leading with the left hand. If that's what the music calls for, then by all means, that's the technique you should use. For me, I like to use the informal stroke. This feels more natural, it feels more comfortable, and it's going to be real easy to travel once you get onto the kit. And in future uh, lessons, I'll demonstrate how these concepts and these techniques apply 
uh, to the kit. Okay. The uh, next double stroke we want to talk about is um, called the pullout, where the first note of the double is soft, the second note is strong. So we'd have a soft note followed by a loud note. Again, quarter notes first to demonstrate. Same thing with the left, slowly first. And then we're going to try one motion so two notes come out. This is the complete opposite of the control stroke, where the first note is soft, second note is strong. Same thing with the left. Okay. If you want to apply this to a quasi-musical situation, we can play unaccented doubles for four counts and then play a series of pullouts for four counts. The exercise would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same thing with a left hand lead. Remember, whatever you practiced with a right hand lead, very important to practice with the left hand. Okay, and we'll get into that open style of playing in future clips. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You also notice that I'm counting out loud. Very important. Here's why. You always make it, beginners, especially. You probably hear your teacher saying, make sure to count out loud, make sure to count out loud. Okay, that's great, but if I'm 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, I'm thinking, why should I count out loud? One, two, three, four. Okay, it's kind of boring, it doesn't really mean anything. Well, think about, as drummers, what is our primary job? Our primary job is to keep good time. We want to make sure that we tune into our internal clock so when we're playing with a band, or if we're playing with a drum line, or wherever we're playing, our internal clock is strong. Yes, play along to a metronome. Yes, play along to music. Yes, practice exercises to music. But if we really want to step out of our comfort zone and add a fifth limb to our practice, we want to use the voice. Because with that, by practicing counting out loud, you're going to strengthen your internal clock that we talked about just a second ago. So yes, you can play, but as I'm playing this double stroke, I immediately feel a little unconnected to what I'm playing, and I feel a sense of almost abandon that I, I don't really have a lot of direction to where I'm going, but as soon as I start to count, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you almost get a sense that the time has become more focused, more centered, and more clear. For me, I think that's going to be a lot easier to lock into um, when you're playing with uh, fellow bandmates and musicians. Be sure to check out that exercise where you've got a series of four counts of unaccented sixteenths, and then a series of four control strokes, a series of four soft sixteenth notes, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, followed by a series of four pullouts. And uh, thanks for checking out my video, and I'll see you again real soon.